This is Mrs. Murphy and today we're going to learn a little bit about Java graphics. So the last program we did was called a console program. Console program is just one that runs in the console window such as DOS or terminal. In JGraphs the output just appears in a little window at the bottom of the screen. It's a little more interesting to do Windows programs because it actually creates a window that you can see the application running. I mean, don't get me wrong, text-based applications have their place, but in my years of teaching, I found it's easier sometimes to understand how the program logic is working if you can see what's going on rather than just showing a bunch of numbers at the bottom of the screen. Plus, if we do Windows programming, it makes for some more interesting projects. Okay, so I'm not going to teach you all that much of the window logic of the code. Instead, I have a template that you can download in Canvas. If you like, you can pause this video for a sec and download and open that code in JGrasp. That way you can refer to this code throughout the video. It's the My Code link in Canvas. Okay, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through that template code. We're going to show you, then we're going to show you how to set some colors of and do some shapes and uh, we'll draw a few shapes together and you can do experiment on your own for the homework assignment. Now if you look at the mycode.java file, um, you can look up at the very top and you'll see a couple of import statements. These are some libraries that Java has that will help us create a window and will handle some of the events for us. You shouldn't have to add any additional libraries to this class, knock on wood, of course, so that I've not forgotten anything. Uh, just make sure that these f lines of code don't get deleted and make sure they're always at the top of your code. Now this mycode.java file uh, still has a class, just like the last project we did. Uh, the class is just the container for all of your code. All of your code for a particular project is going to go inside this class. So the class starts up here at the top and goes all the way down to the closing bracket at the bottom. Make sure the brackets line up and you can check any bracket, but just by hovering over the bracket it will highlight where the JGrass thinks the bracket should close. Now I'm going to skip around a little bit. I'm kind of going down towards the bottom, right before the closing bracket where our MyCode class ends. Here we have our main method, just like we had in our last program. Main's the entry point for your program, just like we had last time. This time it ha it's only going to have one line of code. It's just going to create an instance of the MyCode class. Don't forget to have that make sure your closing bracket for main is there. It should close right before the class closes and line them up so they're nice and pretty. From here on out, you shouldn't have to add any more code to the main other than just changing the line that's currently there. Now right after the class opens, there's a comment that says variables go here. This is where all of your variables will go in this if we're in the in the code. That right now there's one variable there. There's a random generator class variable there and we'll use it to create random numbers in some later projects. After the class variables there's an init method. The init method will run just before your window gets created. Anything you need to set up before the program loads, loads goes in init. In this case you can adjust the width, the height, the title of the window. Title, you know, the title appears in the little title bar inside the, the little window screen at the top. There's also a value to change the timer speed, which we'll use in later projects. The draw method is where you put the graphics codes. Uh, pretty much this is the only method we're going to be using today. Anything you want to draw goes between the opening and, and closing brackets. Notice that the draw method has a parameter called G of type graphics. We're going to be using that G to draw the shapes on the screen. The next few methods we're not going to be using this week, but we will in some un upcoming projects. There's some more events. Uh, they'll respond to different inputs. In this case, it's a mouse press, so whenever the user presses the mouse, any code you get put in between the opening and closing brackets will get run. Uh, this method has also has a parameter. It gives us information about the mouse, such as where is the mouse on the screen, what coordinate does it have. The next method responds to the keyboard. It also has a parameter. Probably tell the, it will tell us what key was pressed. The timer tick is a method that runs on a fixed interval. The speed can be adjusted in the init method with the timer speed value. Right now it's set to 50, if you remember back up at the top in the init method. So that means 
that this method will run every 50 milliseconds. If you were to set that value to a thousand, so there's like a thousand milliseconds in a second, then it would run every second. This is another one of those methods we're not going to use this, this week, but later on we're going to use the timer to move our graphics around on the screen to create some simple animations. Now as you scroll down past the MyCode class where the MyCode bracket ends, there is more code. This code's there to create the window and it runs the code that you've just written. You don't have to modify that code at all, just make sure it's there and it hasn't been modified and your window should run just fine, hopefully. Graphics are so much more interesting with a little color, so the set color command allows us to change the color of the next shape. It actually changes the color of any shape that follows this in the code, and then all of the shapes will remain that color, that chosen color, until you have another set color command to net to for the following shapes after that one. The command to set the color uses that graphics G parameter. So the entire code is G dot set color, and then in parentheses you put color with capital C dot and then you choose the color you want. There are several cho different colors you can choose from. However, as you can see, it's kind of a limited palette of colors, which is why they also have a set color command that uses the RGB color codes. The RGB color code numbers represent how much red green and blue the entire color will contain. They're the same colors codes that we used in the HTML color codes, they're just not in hex. Every value can be a number between 0 and 255. They represent how much of that particular color. This particular color code has most of the blue turned on with 255 on, so it's probably some sort of shade of blue. Now you can find these values pretty much any image editing program such as Paint uh, in Microsoft or uh, just Google RGB color picker and uh, you can find the color you want. Before you can draw anything on the screen you need to understand a little bit how the Java window works. It's really similar to the grid system in, in your math class. You remember you have that quadrant one, quadrant two. Oh yeah, except we have to add that in Java it's upside down. So that means negative numbers go up and positive numbers go down. The x-axis, that's still the same. The positive numbers keep getting larger as they go to the right and the negative go uh, towards the left. So here's an example of the coordinates on the window. We're only using one of the quadrants, the lower left corner. So position 0, 0 is in the upper left. As you move to the right, the numbers get larger on the x-axis, just like in math. And then here's the tricky part. As you go down on the Y axis, the numbers get larger. They're now po positive numbers. Remember our grid's upside down, not backwards. All right, let's show you the code to draw our first graphic. Here we're gonna do a simple rectangle. Okay, there's two possible commands you could use to draw a rectangle. You have draw rect or you have fill rect. The only difference between the two commands is the draw rect just draws the outline, whereas the fill rect fills the shape in with color. Now pretty much all of the graphics commands have a draw and a fill option, except for maybe a line. I guess you can't really fill in a line, can you? So let's use fill rect as our example, but draw rect would be the exact same code, just change the word fill to draw. So in order to draw a rectangle, the command needs some information. You have a fancy programming way of saying that the rectangle needs some information is by saying the fill rect method has four parameters. Parameters, they're just pieces of information that's needed to draw a rectangle. Uh, we need the x and y coordinate of the upper left corner, and you need the width and height of the rectangle. The numbers have to be in that order so it knows which values which, otherwise it might get the x and the width mixed up and you won't have the rectangle you planned on. So here, we have to find out the coordinate of the upper left corner of the rectangle. In this case, it's 200 pixels on the x-axis and 100 pixels on the y-axis. Then you have to find out the width and the height. So the ne there's four squares between each and just looks like each square is 20 pixels. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares across, 140 pixels across, and 40 pixels high. So our command is going to be g dot fill rect, and then in parentheses you put the values for the parameters or the arguments. So you have 20, 100, 140, 40. And that will draw the rectangle that you see on screen. 
The draw oval or the fill oval works in the exact same way as a rectangle. The Y just represents the highest point and the X is the, the leftist point. Is leftist even a word? Good thing I don't think it's English. Anyway, then the width and the height of the rectangle are the width at the widest point and the height at the highest point. So it's just like you have this imaginary rectangle around your oval and those are the coordinates you're giving, but it's just drawing an oval instead. Draw string allows you to draw text on your screen. Just like in our last program, the string has to be in quotes. So if you look at the first line of code in the draw method, it's displaying hello world to the screen. Now the next command is an example to show you that you can still concatenate the values using the plus sign. So the next line would actually display as my value is 42. Now it's a little tricky because it doesn't display in the order of the code this time, it's by the coordinates. So if you look at the hello world command, it has a y value at 100. And the my value is 42 command has a y value set at 50. So the second command is actually displaying above the first command in the window. You can also draw a rounded rect with the draw or fill rounded rect command. It's just going to have two extra values for the arth arc width and arc height. Now the draw and fill polygons are probably the most time consuming. Polygons take three lines of code. So the first line of code sets up all the x coordinates for each point. And the second line of code sets up all the y coordinates. And the last line is what actually draws the shape. If you'll notice, here we have rocket X and rocket Y for the X and Y coordinates, and then the coordinates it's drawing are rocket X and rocket Y, which is a list of coordinates. Now you want to make sure the X coordinates and the Y coordinates are in the same order, and you want to make sure they either go clockwise or counterclockwise. You don't want to skip any points, otherwise you're going to end up with some weird star shape. Okay, so I have the My Code open in JGrasp. I wanted to show you some how to rename the file and how to create a simple, um, simple image using the graphics. Okay, mine's going to be pretty lame, but I wanted to show you all of the commands. So here's the, the fill rect, here's a draw rect, here's an oval, just an oval with the X and the Y the same as a circle, and then I have a polygon for the ears, and then I have some text. And all I've done is I've opened up that image on, online and paint and drawn in what I want. That way I could take a look at the coordinates. But, um, okay, so here we go. First thing we want to do is rename our file. We want to call this our spring picture. So I'm going to say uh, spring, I don't know, how about we call it spring works. Uh, spring might be a keyword. Spring picture or spring pick. We'll call it spring pick. Okay, now copy that because we also need to rename it in two places. The class and then also in main. Here's that my code. We got to replace that with our spring pick. Okay, now as soon as you have that copied and pasted in twice and to both places, then you can save the file. So now I'm going to say save as and it's going to automatically come up as spring pick and I can go ahead and hit save. Okay, so now here we are in our initialize code. If you want to change the size to something else, you can. Maybe we want to make it uh, 700 pixels. That would be fine. Um, you can change the window title. So instead of saying my first program, it can say spring is here, whatever you want to say. I wish it was. Is it? Then here's our draw method. Here's we're gonna, where we're going to put out all of our points. So I'm going to bring up that image so we could kind of see what's going on. Okay, so I now have this set up so I can see my picture that I drew in paint and my graphics at the same time. I'm move this up so we can kind of see what's going on. Okay, first thing, I'm going to draw this round rectangle. I'm going to draw two eyes. I'm going to draw the rectangle and so on. So I want to set the color to pink. So I'm going to say G dot set color. Remember that G comes from this graphics right here. It's called G. And pink is one of the named colors. So I could say color dot pink. There we go. Now, if you run it right now, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, you've set the color to pink, but there's nothing drawing that is pink. Okay, next we're going to draw that round rectangle. So it's uh, 200 pixels over, about 150 down. So I'm going to say G dot fill round rect. Um, 200, 150, then it's going to be 200 across and 200 high. 
then we need some rounding. So I'm going to go maybe 100 pixels for the X and 150 for the Y on the rounding. And that should now draw my rounded rect. So here I'm going to run that. There's my not quite the same color because I drew this in paint and I'm drawing this in Java. So I didn't get the exact colors. So there we go. There is my head. Now I'm going to add some eyes and you, it helps, by the way, if you put in comments. So here I could say something to the effect of this is the head. Um, then we can come here and say um, eyes. Let's do the eyes. Maybe make the eyes blue. G dot set color color dot blue. OK, now for the eyes. I'm going to use a fill oval and I'm just going to put the X and the Y as the same. G dot fill oval. Well, if the eyes are about 130 over and 200 down, right? So we'll say um, I'm going to go 250 over and 200 down. Maybe make them 20 pixels, 30. That might work too. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste this one in and change the Y coordinate just for speed. Maybe about 320 on the X. There we go. So I'm going to run this just kind of so you can see the eyes. Oh, I have an error. And I copied and pasted my error. Even worse, that gives me two. All right. Now we can have our bunny with little eyes. But you get the idea of how to work, how, how this kind of works. You rename the file, you draw in your graphics commands. It's easier if you have some sort of coordinate system you can use to draw it out first on. That way you can just look at, oh, it's 200 over, 200 down. The rectangle is going to be easy because that's what, 2460 two, over and you know, just like you did in math class, all right? So, well, good luck with the rest of your Easter drawing. I've given you a start. If you want to use that, I don't blame you if you don't want to use it anymore. But um, good luck with the homework.